Okay, so this is the start of my ham trailer uh, tower build. Uh, this is an Almond Nightlight Pro. It's a 2008 model. It's got the Caterpillar C1 diesel motor, 30-gallon fuel tank, and then this one's actually missing the generator itself. Uh, but I picked this whole trailer up for $300 uh, off of Craigslist. Uh, I traveled to northern Minnesota to pick it up and plan on refurbishing the thing. Um, the start of which I'm going to show you in this video, uh, tear down, uh, sanding, and doing some rattle can paint job on it. Uh, this whole idea started with a guy named Eric, uh, NY90. Here's uh, another trailer he recently built, uh, bought back in October of 2020, and this is out of Hams in the Park. All right, to start, first step was to get all the decals that were on the trailer off of it. Uh, it's quite obvious from the footage here that some of these decals have been on there probably since the day the trailer went into the fleet. Um, this is me just using a heat gun. Uh, it's a Wagner heat gun. I think I picked it up for 30 bucks off of Amazon. And uh, just peeling off the stickers. At this particular part, I actually thought that the yellow underneath this white sticker was paint. And it turned out the all of the color, apart from the red and the white, was just more more vinyl decals so we were able to get these peeled off it didn't take a tremendous amount of time it took me i don't know a couple of days really of me just sitting down with a heat gun being patient uh, destroying a couple of fingernails to finally get all of the decals off some of the stuff to really get them cleaned up i had to remove some of the hardware the latches and and things like that so not too terrible of a process, and uh, it was made tremendously easier by the purchase of that heat gun. All right, getting started on the old repeater trailer here. Uh, I'm gonna take the lights off today. Gonna get this power cable removed. And uh, you can see I started removing some of the stickers the other day. Um, my plan, is to take all the panels off the two sides, the top, and uh, maybe maybe I'll, it's easier if I just take the whole trailer in, but have them paint it. Um, I haven't decided on a color. Um, that stabilizer jack on this side was uh, kind of wedged in there. I did manage to break that free. Uh, there's something that's still holding it from coming all the way back in the way this one is. Um, but you can see there's a bunch of rust and you can tell this thing's been running around the iron range up north for a while. So I think there's just a lot of dust and whatnot in it. So plan is to start disassembling this. I've got the diesel motor in here. Posted on Craigslist. Got a guy in Tomo, Wisconsin that is interested in coming and looking at it. Um, no generator. The diesel motor uh, was abused for parts uh, to fix another machine. And then uh, yeah, I'm sure the radiator and whatnot's all right. So I'll see if uh, hopefully this guy comes and gets this because this motor apparently still runs. Nothing wrong with it. It was just needed for parts. Uh, generator, I'm not worried about that. My plan is to stick a little propane generator back there. Put some shelving in here and then uh, have some sort of work surface or whatever for the repeater equipment. 30 gallon diesel tank on the other side. Probably gonna remove that. Unfortunately, there's 30 gallons of diesel in it. Um, but maybe that guy that is coming to look at this will want that. Um, I'm not sure we're gonna, what I'm gonna do with the controls there. Um, I might just go ahead and keep or try to reuse them somehow. Um, it, worst case, I'll have to move that winch cable up. I don't know if that winch works on 12 volt DC or if it works on 120 AC. Um, the winch has a 15 amp, 120 volt breaker there. And then it's got that little toggle for up and down. But I, I, don't, I don't know for sure because it's got those three dinky little wires there. Uh, one for up, one for down. It looks to me like it's a DC, but I don't know for certain. So we'll uh, we'll look at that. 
get this thing taken apart, remove the fire extinguisher and things, and um, get there. Uh, the stabilizer jacks are missing, so I'll have to go through Northern Tool or somebody to get some replacements. I'm hoping I can just snap them back onto what's here and I don't have to re-weld that, but if, if I do, uh, that's what we'll do. So yeah, we'll uh, step one, get this thing cleaned up. Okay, another day, starting to get a little more work done on this trailer. Um, I'm not obviously gonna film the whole thing, but we're gonna start getting uh, the diesel motor removed from this trailer. Um, I did end up getting a winch handle fits right in there. I think that motor is AC, so I'm thinking I might replace it with a like a uh, ATV winch or something like that. And um, there's a guy coming. He's buying the diesel motor from me. It's missing some parts, some injectors and whatnot, but he knows what he's into. He's come and look at it once already. He's going to come help me pull this whole thing apart. But supposedly he's taking the radiator, the radiator shroud, the entire diesel motor, and then this 30 gallon diesel tank with him. And that'll leave me a pretty nice empty trailer. Uh, and then I can put a generator right back here, throw some batteries in, and then have some shelving and whatnot set up so it can take various radio decks. So um, this cable I showed before is actually missing the strand. And uh, when you get down by the winch, you can see where they actually just cut it off. It must have frayed. And then in here, you can see it's frayed there too. So I've never even lifted this thing. I know it kind of works, but um, I went ahead and just to facilitate our removal of this motor, I'm gonna take this whole top off. It's gonna help me paint it too. But in the meantime, I need to take the tower itself off. So I just uh, took a roto zip with a cutoff wheel and zipped off this cable which I had to replace anyhow. So I'm just gonna tape it up here so I know what it looks like uh, when I uh, need to re-thread this cabling. And then uh, get my wife out here, she can help me lift. This thing is super, super light. Um, and get going. Try to take some videos as we get this stuff removed, but um, basically it's just a simple pull the cover off, Pull, pull the tower off, pull the cover off, heave the diesel motor and the fuel out of there and, and call it a day. I'll check back in a little bit. Progress is being made. Dude man hasn't shown up yet, but got the top off. This has helped me get the mast off the trailer. Thing's actually a lot heavier than it looks. Um, I'm glad I didn't try to do it by myself. Um, but got the top and sides off. I need to do that anyway so that I can paint the thing. And then uh, I'm gonna start working. I already got that shroud unbolted. I just need to pull it up out of here. And then there's some fittings for, looks like the air intake. And just a matter of us getting this whole thing unbolted piece by piece and um, getting it out of here. There's the motor for the old winch I just need to figure out what exactly it is and I'm sure if I wash it off there's stuff in there but there's a control panel here I think I'm gonna send this whole thing with dude so it goes with that I've still got this one here we'll see what he says or what he wants to do and then obviously the transformers and the capacitors I do not need. So all of that is coming out of there and just getting thrown away. I don't know what the deal is with the electrical box. This is not a factory spiel. Um, I'm kind of wondering if this trailer wasn't just stationary at some point. But that was all unwired after I acquired it. Um, you can see the cable where I snipped it there. And then, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and try to get the rest. Of, I'm not going to do the ballast and stuff today. I'm just interested in getting this motor and the fuel tank out of here. And uh, that way it can be sent on down the road. This guy's killing me. 
bike's sitting there, just waiting for me. Come ride me, Eric. Let's go. Let's go for a ride. Why are you waiting for this fool that was supposed to be here three hours ago? Oh well. Alright, I got the tank up. That wasn't that hard. Once I got that cross member out of there, just a little He-Man and things filled with up to there. That's nearly a full full tank of diesel. That's the dyed off-road stuff, so you can't put it in your truck, otherwise you'll go to jail and they'll take your first three kids and all that other fun shit, so. All right, next steps. All right, after a little digging, it turns out this is a DC motor, three amps max. Okay, just so you know, I'm about to make a bunch of silly assumptions here. Obviously, as I said that, I didn't see that it said 200 volts DC, not 12 volts DC. Also, some of the other assumptions I might make throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to find may be false in later videos. I'm leaving them in here just so that you can see my entire experience, both the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly. Which means I can power it off of a battery. I have probably a forward, a reverse, and a ground here. Probably a forward, a reverse, and a ground. And I can just hook it up. That means I don't have to try to re-engineer re any of this stuff. The crank still works. I still have to thread in some new, uh, new cable. That's the last thing. I'm going to leave the fire extinguisher mount on here. And... The ground lug, believe it or not, for comms equipment, that's going to come in handy. I'm going to replace all this stuff. I think I'm going to put like a USB charger or something else in here. Not sure what I'll put on these switches. I might just I might just put switches in there so that we can turn on various power supplies and whatnot. Um, this this section here will likely be empty. Um, I might put a weatherproof automatic transfer switch in there. And then somewhere on the side, um, it makes more sense for me to go on the driver's side here than on the passenger side. But it looks like this already has provisioning for shore power of some sort. Um, so I want to get shore power. I need a connection for uh, 12 volt. Uh, solar charger and then um, we're going to put some batteries so the plan is to put a gener generator mounted crosswise across the back behind where this tank is um, set up three batteries here I'm going to probably cover this whole thing in aluminum just a sheet of aluminum like eighth inch or maybe quarter inch thick aluminum um, it just doesn't going to corrode as easily I might just put some green treat in there too just to keep the splash from the road and whatnot. And then, yeah, just one, two, three batteries, a disconnect switch somewhere over here, a toggle for the winch up and down, generator, shore power, 12 volt, and then we'll have provisions for radio decks in here. And again, like I said, I think I'm gonna do a modular thing of some sort. I did get a D-Star um, controller that I was told I can use in here. And I think the plan is to have UHF primary. We're gonna put an APRS deck in here. Um, the idea is it'll be a digipeter as well as a rebroadcast, you know. Read in, APRS, broadcast it back out um, just for, for giggles. So that'll be that. But uh, first thing is get this thing cleaned sanded, painted, and then I can start building out the trailer itself, reassembling things. It'll be a lot easier to do without the roof and the sides on. And um, I might take the roof and the sides and have somebody do that professionally, we'll see. So, moving along. All right, that's all I'm gonna share today. I've got more footage. Uh, I feel like I never take enough footage for, for all of these things that I wanna show. 
I'm trying to get better at that. But um, I'll have another video out in a couple of days um, that'll show some of the sanding, some of the painting, and um, just a lot of the busy work. Um, at this point today, it's December 5th. Um, the trailer is assembled. Um, it needs new wheels, um, but the, the front and the back um, and the top is on. The, the mast is reattached to the top. I don't have the doors that flip down attached yet uh, because I'm still working on building the floor and whatnot. As I alluded earlier in the video, some of the assumptions I made when I was tearing this trailer apart just certainly did not match. And um, I've learned quite a bit uh, on this little journey. So um, hopefully I can share another video a couple of days that, that shows some of the cleanup process, the painting progress, and then some of the assembly. And then um, I'm actively working here. This mess right here is uh, me working on prototyping up the network configuration. Um, and I'll explain more about what that all involves and what we actually are settling on for this trailer um, and its role in our, our little fleet. Um, so thanks to NY90. Uh, this, this has been a lot of fun uh, for me so far. Um, there, there's another guy, Doug, uh, and Peter, and uh, a few others that are involved in this, this whole trailer fleet as well. Um, Tim New. And um, I'm, I'm excited to finally get my trailer up in the air, hopefully by spring, probably earlier than that. I have not settled on how I'm going to resolve the winch thing. I think I'm going to just buy a hoist motor for that, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.